Hello guys and welcome back to Gracie TV. Now in today's video, I have one of the most infamous cases in South Korean history. It is said that still a lot of Koreans don't know the individual names of famous K-pop idols, but they all know this guy's name and his name is Yu Young Tol. Let's explore the minds and what makes him so infamous. His case is kind of unique as I was researching. It really blew my mind just what was going inside this guy's head and how maybe your childhood would kind of predict your outcome. We're gonna be talking about that, but before we get started, do you guys love my outfits? <laughs> if you guys have seen my virtual birthday party on my main channel, I opened gifts and this was one of the outfits from Fashion Nova. Like, I felt so princessy today with this outfit on. I also have the cool jewel jeans on right now. It's one of my favorite jeans. This amazing faux pearled earring, the heart shape, and I thought this was just super cute, super elegant. So if you guys have been really interested in the Korean history, you guys might, might have came across this picture, aka the name Yu Young Tae. He's known to be one of the most notorious psychopaths in South Korean history. Of course, there's a lot of people, but he is one of them. Yu was born in 1970 in South Korea, which makes him about 50 years old today, but during when this case happened, he was around his early 30s. So you guys be the judge of this section, but as most would call it, Yu did have an unfortunate life. He grew up very poor, no money in his family, and his father was an alcoholic. His parents also divorced when he was just seven years old due to violence and addiction so he did grow up having a really bad environment with his family his father also died when Yu was only 15 years old due to jay walking it was also said that Yu was made fun of so much from his classmates as he was growing up because of his poverty now this is going to possibly contribute to his hate towards the wealthy during his high school days he was frequently caught stealing from a neighborhood and he was actually charged with burglary so as you guys could see his trouble started very young when he was underage. You also had a talent for art, which is kind of interesting because if you look into a lot of like psychopathic infamous cases, a lot of them actually have really good talent in art. Now you guys be the judge, do you guys also think the artistic side and psychopaths are related? Because it is kind of true, there was a study done that says it appears that creative individuals tend to have higher levels of emotional sensitivity and to be prone toward dishonesty and risk taking. Of course, most real famous artists don't have a cruelty side, but some psychopaths who do end up taking dark sides later in their life also are related to these artistic sides. In 1991, Yu ended up getting married. He had a child in 1994. Unfortunately, the same year, Yu's older brother committed suicide due to depression with his disabilities. It was said that he was blind. His marriage also did not last long either. Also, he kept on getting caught for burglary and doing these criminal activities. Because he was harming a teenage girl and adolescent, he spent three years in jail in 2000s for his crime. Because all of these criminal histories, his wife ended up wanting to divorce Yu and to also take custody of their four-year-old son. This is when Yu's anger towards women also developed. Now remember, when he was growing up, because of his poverty, he developed anger towards the wealthy. But one of his tendency is to really blame other people for his actions. He blamed and he wanted to get revenge on others without really looking deep inside himself and what his problem was. It was 2003 when he was released from prison, he decided to get the revenge on his wife and his son. So like I said, when he got out of prison, he was planning to wipe out his whole family to get a revenge. But when he entered his wife's house, he saw his son and he said he was too adorable and he just could not go through with what he was going to do to his son. Next was his wife. Okay, I'm gonna get revenge on my wife then. Now when he saw his wife sitting in the kitchen area, apparently she was drinking one beer and one piece of seaweed. So that is when he said he felt bad for his wife and his family and he decided not to go through with his plan. But instead, he was going to get revenge on the wealthy. Now this is the part where it does kind of confuse a lot of people. I mean, was he just being kind? Was he, did he have these human emotions that you should have to not act upon these hideous crimes. There's actually a lot of these similar cases with serial killers where, where they end up not killing their family. Some serial killer families actually also feel that it's not like they were saved by their killer husband. They actually feel that they were just lucky. So you guys let me know what you guys think. Do you think they actually have emotions and they don't want to do this to their personal family? Or do you think they were just lucky and it was more like a 
time ticking bomb. Now, this is when his sick spree targeting the wealthy started. It was in September 24th, 2003, where he broke into the house of 73 year old retired professor in Shinsadong. Shinsadong is a rich area in Korea, it's still known as one of the most expensive areas in Seoul. He killed the elderly while his wife was watching. The wife was terrified and she went to the closet where there was full of money and she said, Here, take all the money you want. But this is when you said, do you think I'm doing this for money? And he proceeded to kill her. This is sick because he actually did not take any of the money. He actually did not take any money or possessions throughout this whole killing spree. A month later, he did the same thing, but experts on crime cases say he especially had extreme anger towards young men, as it might have brought him back memories of his father when he was young. It seemed like he just did not want to feel powerless because he felt like, you know, younger men in their 30s and 40s could overpower him and he just really did not like that feeling. Next was another victim who lived in Shinsadong who was about 69 years old. Again, rich house, rich person, rich family. Next victim, he burned the houses on fire and the victims were in their 80s and 50s. Now this is when it was said that he met his girlfriend who was an escort. Now as they dated, the girlfriend realized that Yu was a criminal and he just had this really dark past and he really had a violent personality to him. Now when she decided to break up with Yu, they had a really big argument and they were on the edge of their relationship. Now Yu decided to keep her captive, almost decided to end her life, but he he thought that if he did go through with the plan, there was just going to be too much evidence towards him because obviously they had a lot of phone call conversations and he thought that he was just going to get caught so he decided to not go through with it. So this is when instead of ending his girlfriend's life, he decided to take out this vengeance and anger towards her to other people. This is when he decided to switch his vengeance towards wealthy people to escorts. Where he decides to not actually end the life of the people he knows, but he decides to take the vengeance and revenge out on other people who have a similar job or who has a similar personality and characteristics as them. The first female victim in his spree was a 24 year old escort whom they spent a day together and then she realized that he wasn't a normal person as he was being aggressive. He he also did not let her go home and that is when he killed the lady inside his apartment. It was revealed that he buried the victim in a nearby hill. He did this to nine other victims who were also escorts. Once he even pretended to be a police officer in order to lure his victims. His sick ways also consisted of eating the livers of his victims which wasn't confirmed. It could be a rumor but by now I mean I wouldn't be surprised if this was real. He also had some of the girls call their parents to see how they were doing before they were killed. Now this is when soon after the escort services noticed that there was a lot of girls missing and never coming home so they thought it was super odd. Now I guess he was using one service company and not like different companies which I guess back in the early 2000s that was less companies and less businesses than it does now. Now this business company searched the phone numbers of the girls who went missing and tracked down the same person who it came down to, Yu Young Tuck. Now for the last time, you call the service one more time to request a woman. That is when the agency alerted the police because they knew that this guy was definitely involved in missing girls. Now the funny thing is, when Yu was finally captured, he somehow, somehow persuaded the police Police to take off his handcuffs. Apparently he was acting like a lunatic or he was just having a fit and they just really wanted to calm him down. So they did take off the handcuffs, which I'm not sure why they would ever do that. Then while the police was a little bit busy, he escapes. Guys, 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 what? Of course, thank God 11 hours later, you was caught. But if he wasn't caught, there would be a killer out on the loose. In total, you is responsible for up to 20 lives. He was sentenced to death, but the last time death sentence was actually carried out in South Korea was all the way back in 1997 so it's been like over 20 years. So he is technically still in prison, living, breathing, doing whatever he is. He's, I mean, I guess 50 years old. Kind of like the age of now the victims that he has killed. I mean, he, I mean, he is potentially someday gonna reach the elderly and I really hope that he can see how they would have felt when he was doing these sick crimes. Now in court, or at least in prison, it was said that he was sorry for his actions and he feels really bad for the victims, but he did confess 
us and say that if he was not caught, then he would have probably never stopped with these evil crimes. Now also one of the most crazy information about this case is that you said one of the only times that he felt real fear during his whole life was when his son called him during his killing. His young child called you basically asking daddy, are you okay? Because you was apparently having a cold. That is crazy. The fact that the son was talking to his father while he was doing these vicious, vicious evil acts. But then at the end of the day, even if he says that was his one fear that he had, I mean, he never stopped his action. It's not like his family, his son was able to persuade him to stop doing these things. He kept on doing these actions. So in a way, I mean, it wasn't enough fear for him to actually stop what he was doing. A small update, there was a prison guard who secretly sneaked in some items you requested. I don't know why a guard would do that, but yes, he requested some adult Japanese anime. It really also brings up the question of how you brought up really shaped your future. It really shaped him to have these anger for the world. He just felt like the world was treating him unfairly. He hated the gap of the rich and the poor and how they were treated. And probably just the way his father treated his mother and the whole family, it really shaped him to become who he was, which was just like his father, yet even worse. And there's just so many cases involving this where if you do you grow up in a violent broken home, it is likely that you are going to do the same with your own family. Although he did grow up in a really broken home, the way he acted is based on his responsibility and his own actions. No one put a gun to his head and told him to do what he did. He did what he did in his own will, no one else's. But I really want to know what you guys think. Do you think that it is not fair based on the system of growing up such a big gap from rich and poor that still exists today? Should we feel bad for those who do grow up in poverty and broken home that really shapes who they are in the future? I mean, technically all they know is a broken home because that is what you grew up with. Of course, in my opinion, not everybody turns up being a serial killer if you do grow up in poverty and the broken home and in violence. I mean, there are people who grow up who change their lives and it is, I think, entirely up to them to really turn their life around and to really use your talents in a positive way. If you guys like that, hit the like button and share this video so we can really let the word know. Also hit the notification bells because I reply to all my early birds. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a magical day.